Alrighty. These are looking okay, I think. Just that, just a little bit, I suppose. Uh, welcome. Welcome, 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 everybody. It is Newbie Tuesday, and I want you to get hyped, because Newbie Tuesday is that hypest of days. Is ever, is my audio seems to be okay? Everything seems to be okay. I'm not dropping frames. Uh, welcome, everyone. It's good to see everyone. Taggart and Husky are lurking in chat. Welcome. Lurkers, always welcome. All right. The... The cult we, again. We people are saying the word cult in chat. Uh, we we le for legal reasons we cannot call it a cult. A hunter um, it hunt. is. Uh, this is a Do passionate a club of cephalopod enthusiasts. Uh, Gilco with the nine months. Do you ever pen test IOET devices? Uh, yes and no. I've never pen tested an IOT device specifically. A must hunt. Like I've never been hired on an assessment specifically to pen test an IOT device. Um, but I do encounter them on internal networks and have pen tested them, um, as part of a larger internal network penetration test. You do run into them on internal networks, uh, very frequently. Uh, MT Taggart with the 12 months. My goodness. Welcome back to the All House Red team, my friend. Thanks for supporting the stream. Uh, happy anniversary. Exactly. Happy anniversary. Let's, uh, we're starting Stream Raiders early today. I gotta keep up with Stream Raiders, man. I forget about it for like hours at a time sometimes. There we go. How's everybody doing? Is everyone's we How is everybody's week on this fine day? Orbital Gun bringing us Jelly, a new cult initiate. A Thank you so much, Orbital cult. Gun. Welcome, Jelly to the all has red team welcome in so what do we have on the docket today my friends well we caught a couple of things um we're going to be doing um uh, a little we're going to be doing a little some try hack me rooms for sure we're going to be for sure doing some try hack me rooms i have gotten a special request to um to showcase a little bit of docker usage um, so if that's, uh, if that's something people would be interested in seeing, we're not, we're, we're not, when we talk about Docker usage, we're not talking about container escapes or, um, the security implications of containers or any, any Happy of that. Happy Tuesday, my dude. Hope you're having a fantastic week. Making some solid progress in the OSCP lab, making it my BCH. That's great to hear, Jeff Ram. Thanks for those 100 Tiggle biddies. I'm glad you're making progress in OSCP. Well done. Heavy Rain IQ. Thank you for the follow. Cthulhu Fatten to you, my friend. We will not be doing King of the Hill anymore. Why would we not be doing... We're not going to do it today. We're not doing it today. We do King of the Hill on some fun day Sundays. Um, because that's appropriate. Um, what, we're not talking about Docker exploitation. We're talking about docker usage like how to integrate docker into your workflow what it's useful for um and how specific and some basic how to use it to at least a basic degree uh ever had to pivot through a kubernetes cluster shits like docker on crack uh there is a hack the box machine that is that has kubernetes involved but i don't remember which one it is um i've never had to had to pivot through a cluster on a real assessment yet, but um, Kubernetes is getting more and more prevalent. You see them a lot in cloud environments, so you definitely should be aware of it. Uh, I have run into issues with not having Python 2 available in my Kali box, so I feel like knowing how to use Docker when certain exploits are written in Python 2. Yeah, no, uh, we're going to talk about what Docker is useful for. You just you, you listed a very good reason. Uh, to use Docker. Basically, if you have a tool that runs in Python 2, Docker is good for that tool. Uh, Docker is good for uh, um, or for using that tool without having to actually install Python 2 on your machine. Um, that's always great. Is it allowed to ki delete king.txt? No, it is not allowed. Atman Mabruk. I tried installing the Elk stack in Docker in my VM, and it was quite challenging. Well, this is only going to be a basic. This is only going to be a basic um, uh, introduction to Docker. Keep in mind, this is Newbie Tuesday. I don't want to. 
Uh, I don't want to overwhelm people. Our last Newbie Tuesday was not all that great. Um, well, I mean, we did. We, it was fun. We did have some uh, some good Eldritch learnings, uh, but it was not. It was not of a whole lot. It was not. It was not good for the newbies. I did not feel good about it being uh, particularly useful for beginners. So today, I definitely want to make sure to keep it approachable to as many people as possible. So it's only going to be a, a relatively rudimentary uh, introduction to Docker, what it's useful for. And then perhaps we'll do a, uh, a tri-hack-me room that has to do with Docker if we can find one that is appro uh, the appropriate difficulty. Um, uh, I recommend Pi ENV as well. Yeah, no, no, you have, there's Pi ENV, there's Pip, uh, Pip X. There is uh, poetry uh, more recently. Um, there's lots of ways now, lots of different ways uh, to isolate Python, to create, to, uh, to isolate Python dependencies. Python is one of those languages that you'll find yourself using with Docker quite a bit um, or, or similar environments quite a bit simply because uh, there are several, like, there are, there are some important tools in Python that are written in Python that are really particular about dependencies. Those uh, some examples would be crack map exec, uh, impacket, um, anything that runs in Python two, uh, anything that requires Python two. I mean, uh, th those kinds of things tend to you t tend to give you a hard time. Oh, but I've had also had issues with Bloodhound, uh, the Python implementation of Bloodhound as well. Uh, so. It is, uh, it's, it, that I resolved using a Docker container. So it, it's, Docker is a solution, uh, for the problem that many people have, which is, uh, which is like, for problems with tools, uh, for problems with Python dependencies. It is a solution. It is not, it is not the only solution by any means. Uh, I'm still uh, the way you explain things is super helpful, so I'm here super here for it. I'm I'm super glad to to hear about that. What is your opinion on cybernetics and offshore for hack the box close to OSCP? You don't need either of them. Uh, I wouldn't. They're both going to be more advanced than what you're going to see on the OSCP. More most likely, uh, I would recommend sticking to proving grounds um, for OSCP. If you have proving grounds, uh, proving grounds practice the paid subscription version. That's even better. How do you use poetry? I don't know. I've only used poetry one time, and to be honest, it didn't work for me. Um, so I think I ended up using a Docker container in that instance as well. Um, I'm new to poetry. It's a uh, I've used pipx quite a few times, um, and I've used Python virtual environments, pip e and v, or Python e and pi e and v. Um, I have not used poetry all that much. That's not to say poetry is bad. Um, I know I do have some colleagues that use it, that, and and then indeed love it. Uh, I just, I personally haven't integrated it into my workflow. What was the name of that script that created the container of choice? Containerize or something? I don't know what you mean by that, uh, Tmanster. All right. Offsected OSCP, a dirty one by missing, miss, uh, the AD scoring change. Uh, well, I've, from what I've heard, the active directory on the exam is actually very rudimentary. Um, from what I've been told. Um, and that if you, if you, if, uh, from what I've been told, if you did the se if you understand the section of the course that deals with active directory and can replicate it all in a different, in a different environment, then you're good to go. It's like basically, it's basically 40 points for free is what I've been told. Um, so you d do not fear that. Do not fear. You, you shouldn't, you should not fear the, uh, the active directory on the exam. If you would like to practice with Active Directory ahead of the exam, I recommend TriHackMe's Throwback Lab. Uh, that's more of a beginner Active Directory exam, more cl uh, Active Directory Lab, closer to something that you would see on OSCP or EJPPT or something like that. Ugh. Let's do some quick news. We we do have some more news, and it's it, it's going to feel like it's a month ago. Or however long I don't know when did Polkit come out? Uh, when did when did when was Polkit a thing? I mean, it obviously still is a thing, but now I feel like uh, new Linux bug gives root on all major distros. 
exploit released. So Linux is having some problems. Hey, Linux, you okay? You okay? Because I feel like every month, every month we have a new Linux privilege escalation. Um, this is called Dirty Pipe, um, which is a very excellent name uh, for for a for an exploit. Very excellent. Um, through publicly available through security researcher Matt Kellerman responsibly disclosed the Dirty Pipe vulnerability and stated that it affects Linux kernel 5.8 and later. Uh, CVE 2022-0847 allows a non-privileged user to inject and overwrite data in read-only files, including SUID processes that run as root. Uh, Kellerman discovered the bug after tracking down a bug that was corrupting web server access logs for one of his customers. States that the vulnerability is similar to Dirty Cow, fixed in 2016. He does have. He did release a POC. Can we find a POC? Uh, looks like it's uh, it's a compiled exploit. Yeah, so he writes a set you. It looks like he writes a set UID binary, uh, and then just simply executes it. Uh, let's see if we can. An updated exploit by security researcher Blasty. Dirty Cow also allowed you to write to files. Um, which is why, and uh, w which is why they're calling it similar to that. Oh, dirtypipes.c, perfect. Let's see what we're dealing with. Let's open it in code. We're not going to compile it, but we may try and run it in our virtual machine if we take a look at this. We're studying Dirty Pipe. We're just taking a look at it. Again, it is Newbie Tuesday. I'm not going to go super deep. This is These are the dark magics, okay? You see this? Uh, what this is, this is looks like it's a, just a simple SUID binary. Uh, this is a... This is all... Don't get scared by this hex. This looks like it's just a binary hex representation of, uh, of a set UID binary is really probably all it is. Uh, he's got it well commented, so that's good. Uh, dirty pipe caused by an uninitialized pipe buffer flags variable demonstrates how to overwrite any file context contents in the page cache even if the file is not permitted to be written immutable or a re on a read-only mount this exploit requires linux 5.8 or later there are two major limitations the offset cannot be used on a page boundary it needs to write one byte before the offset to add a reference to this page to the pipe so they're referring to memory pages by the way and the right cannot cause a page, cross a page boundary. Okay. When they talk about pages, they're talking about memory pages. So this is, yeah, all this is, is a, all this is, is an elf, uh, a Linux, uh, an executable Linux file. It's, it's extensible, extensible Linux format or something, I think it stands for. But it's basically just a Linux executable. Uh, that's just a set UID binary. That's all, it's, that's all it's doing. Okay, so he... What happened to my music? Extendable link, is it, it, it... I don't think it's executable. Would you ever do content on building a home lab and custom bone machine for making boxes for platforms? Uh, I could if you would like. I, I certainly could if you would like. I've never made a... Uh, I, we need to hear music. Yeah, I think my hood brushed against my... Uh, uh, headset and turn the music down. Yeah. Um, I couldn't hear it in my headset, so I was like, what happened to it? So, don't get too wrapped around the axle with what, with all of these dark magics that are happening here. Um, the, these are obviously pretty advanced. This is like, this is a memory, ex this is a memory based exploit. So it's, uh, pretty, it's pretty, uh, advanced, but we'll go ahead and compile this and see. Uh, on and execute it on Linux to see if it does anything. Let's just open this up so we can see it properly. I hit my toe against the furniture today. Oh, I hate it when that happens. 
It's always like the worst thing that could have ever happened to you. It fucking hurts. All right, so let's move this into my shared folder. I'll just dump it right here. Okay. Did they give us compile instructions? Does it need any particular compilation? Well, we'll just see if it compiles. That background is a nod to weird tense. It is not. It is not a nod to that. Okay, we can go GCC. Uh, we'll just try Dirty Pipes. It looks like it compiled. Uh, dirty Pipes set UID. How does, so how does it work? Do I... I thought it... I thought it just, uh, I thought it had a set UID built into it. I must be misunderstanding. Uh, I guess it wants me to give it a set UID binary. Hijacking and restoring the contents of a set. So it, it puts it back. So we'll try that. And we are root. Just like that, we are root, chat. So there you go. There's the newest Linux. The newest Linux vulnerability there. The newest dirty cow, if you will. There you go. Obviously very easy. Yeah, very, very easy. Yeah, so it looks like it injects uh, the code in that uh, the code inside of it into this binary, then it executes uh, it executes the binary, uh, and then it and it gets root, and then it restores the set UID binary to what it was before. Uh, then it execute uh, 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 so uh, so it doesn't like corrupt it or anything like that. Crazy stuff. Yeah, the guys that come up with this stuff are legit wizards. They are, but you could be there too. Don't feel like you could never be there. When we call them wizards, they're just experienced. These guys are experienced and they've and they've done memory-based exploitation before. Don't feel like you can't get there. Like maybe as a newbie it might seem like a lot for you, but it's it is certainly attainable by everybody in chat to reach the level that these people are at. So consider it a goal. Practice does make perfect. On a way to progress, do you recommend to not use MSF or it doesn't really matter overall? Um, I would say don't, 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 don't rely on MSF as a crutch. Uh, if you can do an exploit manually, it's probably better for your learning process. In the real world, you're in the real world, you will be using MSF quite a bit, probably. Uh, so you definitely want to know how to use MSF. But you don't want to use it as a crutch. There's using MSF, and there's rely, and it, there's MSF didn't work, so I'm completely lost. Like, do you, do you see how do you, there's like a happy medium? There's there there's you want to be able to use MSF, but not use it as a crutch. Does that make sense? You want to be familiar with how MSF works, without uh, relying on it. Hopefully, that makes sense. I worked with the guy that found Cell Shock. He was a legit wizard. I'm sure his brain had a bash terminal. Oh, I don't I, it doesn't surprise me at all. Again, these people are big brains. Um, don't don't let me undersell them. These people are big fucking brains. But we have we have some big brains in chat too, okay? Or some future big brains. Some wrinkly brains. Some future wrinkly brains. If you don't make things manually, you forget certain details, so it's not helpful. It does. It is helpful to some degree to exploit things manually if you're in a lab environment or something. If you're on a real pen test, um, a lot of times you're going to be on stricter timetables. Uh, so you're just going to want shit to work. Laying that dirty t dirty pipe on Riley Reed. 
I didn't go there, but you went there. Let let the record show that Al did not go there this time. Jifferam went there, okay? I heard Star behind me. Is she in here? Are you in your, uh... No, she's not in there. I don't know where she went. Sweet Pea! I don't know where she went. Okay, don't click on that link. Let's not post context uh, contextless links in chat, please. D don't click on Mercury's link. In fact, we're just gonna... But please don't post contextless uh, links in chat. Where's the Dirty Pipes GitHub? Uh, it wasn't posted on a GitHub, it was on the guy's Twitter. Here, let me link it for you. There you go. There's the guy's Twitter. Blasty. I was looking at the link safely. Okay, as long as it's as long as it's safe, uh, I just pref would prefer if people don't put post contextless links in chat. If there's a reason, like if you're linking me to some news article you want me to watch, that's one thing. It, and it was not just a contextless link; it was like a short link. Before you go on a mod, what, mod rant, what what did I rant about? No, excuse you. Excuse you, Helen of Tor. Ex you're you. I I I didn't say anything about the mods. I just I didn't. Okay, she's putting words in my mouth now. I'm a dickweed for stuff I didn't do. Now, that's good. Anyway, so I just wanted to show off this uh, this uh, this new exploit. Pretty cool stuff here. Pretty cool stuff. Okay, I've not. Ne I never. I did not say OMG. Where are the mods? I did not say that. Um, I did not say that. Uh, I was called a dickweed for not doing anything. For doing nothing. So, all right. Let's uh. Let's 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 go ahead and log into Try Hack Me and see. Oh, I was gonna show off. Uh, I was gonna show off. Uh, Docker. Uh, so let's do Docker. We'll go into... No, we'll go in... We'll just go to my root directory. Okay, here we are. So what is Docker, basically? Okay? So Docker is containerization software. Uh, Docker is containerization software um, that... So what so but so now we that begs the question what is a container? So you can think of a container kind of like kind of like a virtual machine, like a miniature virtual machine. Okay? Uh it's not really a virtual machine. So a a, a virtual machine like this is a virtual machine that that you're looking at right now. This is a a Kali virtual machine. Um uh that that that's um that's running on my host. A virtual machine, like in VirtualBox, will have its own virtualized hardware. Like its own, it's got its own kernel, its own CPU, its own, uh, its own virtualized hardware. That's well. In reality, the virtualized hardware is running on your the same physical hardware, but it doesn't know that the software that's running in the virtual machine doesn't know that. It's using a virtual, entirely virtualized components. Does that make sense? So, what's the di so what then is a container? A container is like a virtual machine, except it doesn't have those virtualized components that we talked about. Uh, it shares the host's kernel, so the same kernel is in use um, between doc uh, Docker containers and uh, 
and uh, the host and the host container or uh, that and the host machine that's running Docker. Okay, um, and it is essentially an isolated file system. Like it's its own isolated file system. It's a file system that's isolated from the host uh, that you can run things from. Um, that's essentially what a container is. It's a little bit more complicated than that. Um, it's a little bit more a little bit more complicated. Are containers just as secure as VMs? Uh, I guess so. if they're configured correctly, yeah. I would say they're more secure than VMs if they're configured correctly. Uh, like VMs and containers, it's, with VMs and containers, it's almost all like configuration. Unless you've got some kind of Docker or VirtualBox zero day, it's almost always how you have them configured that makes them secure or not. It's a friendly jet. So yeah, it's a, it's a. So what is the use of Docker to a penetration tester? Why are people ask why? Why use Docker for a penetration tester? What what do normal people use it for? So Docker was meant to resolve that if you've ever been a developer and you've run code, okay, you've uh, you've executed some code uh, and it works fine on your machine, and then you pass the code to your colleague and it, and it shows some weird error you've never seen before, and then you say, uh, then you say the obligatory works on my machine. And then just walk away. Like that's that, that's the kind of situation that Docker was meant to resolve. Docker was meant to produce uh, like carbon copy environments, like uh, yeah, test environments for for uh, for environments that are essentially identical to run these things in. Does that does that make sense? Does that make sense, friends? So, what is it useful? F so, a lot of times you'll see containers in production as well, because again, they I, the the whole idea of an of a Docker container is that only one application is running in it. Al falls at wrinkly. Thank you, great, with the 100 Seagull biddies. Thank you so much, Popov Popov BG. Thanks for the follow. The whole idea of a container is that there's one application running in it and that the application gets its own isolated environment uh, so that its dependencies aren't conflicting with anything else, with anybody else, um, and that it it is... Um, and so therefore it can run um, regardless of all of those things. Hopefully, uh, with regardless of what other applications are actually running, what other containers are actually running on the target. How do you find images? Uh, there's something called Docker Hub. Um, Docker will often search for images for you, uh, but I'll also show you how to build images really quickly as well. Does that does that make sense, chat? Uh, as far as what a container is, is anyone confused as to what a container is? Difference between containerized apps and microservices? I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know what am I... I'm not a developer, okay? Listen. I'm not a developer. Uh, if you guys are going to come in here and ask a professional red teamer, all these like, hey, what's the difference between... I, I have no fucking idea what a microservice is, okay? not. A, I don't have a single clue how it differs from a container. Um, uh, or if it even is different from a container. So it's not... That's not, I'm not the person to ask, okay? So what is Docker useful for, for you? Okay, what are, for a penetration tester? For a penetration tester, Red Teamer, what is Docker useful for? And it turns out a whole lot. Is it one of your core tools? Are you going to use it every single day? No. Probably not. Um, probably not. However... It does resolve a lot of issues with when you've got a lot of tools that run uh, uh, installed on your Kali machine or you've got tools installed on your commando machine. Like I use it quite a bit on my uh, work machine because I've got a lot of tools installed there. I've got my environment set up in a particular way. And if a tool won't run, it's throwing a weird error. I'll spin it up in a Docker container to see if I still get that error or if it runs. And more often than not, it'll run inside of the Docker container because its dependencies have been isolated. 
GN Baloo and Ricky Bosk, thank you for the follow. So, um, you're going to use it in those situations where... Uh, so you can run an app in a container, but like OS, like what do you what do you mean by that? PD PD Rasta NR one. I don't. You're gonna have to put a little bit more sentence in that sentence. I have to leave. Will there be a vod on YouTube? At some point, I need to like start uploading all of these old vods to YouTube. I keep forgetting. As a DevOps guy professionally, finally my time to shine. I appreciate the DevOps guys in chat who are explaining what microservices are, because I have no fucking idea. Hi, I'm new to here. I'm new to hacking all. Hey, welcome, po uh, Popov BG. Good to have you. Uh, we're learning about a very particular tool right now. And uh, then we're going to be doing some fun... Uh, some fun... Um, some fun intentionally vulnerable machines demonstrating some hacks for you. Um, so... The most so the most basic usage of Docker is going to be just to run a container from the command line. So let's show very simply. Uh, what's the is it doc? It's Docker run. Uh, hello world. Is it hello world hyphen? I think it's hello world. Oh, so Docker so Docker does need to run his root, and we're going to explain why that's the case here in a second. I think it's hello hyphen world. Okay. So I already had that image installed. Oh, let's do stream writers really quickly. Did you not set up user access for Docker? Uh, I'm not in the Docker group. No, I just sudo everything when I use it. It's not good practice to uh, to put any to use the to utilize the Docker group, or to allow non-root users to run Docker. Yeah, Gilco, I understand how Docker works. Thank you. People in the chat are explaining that explaining that if I set they expl are explaining to me how Docker works, like while I'm trying to explain how Docker works, I understand that I need to be root to run Docker, and I understand that I could put myself in the Docker group, or I could give myself sudo permissions for Docker. I understand that. I fully get it. Okay. I fully understand how Docker works. Okay, up upgrading my stuff. I'm going to explain all this stuff here in just a second. You can make a group with Docker? No, there is a special group called the Docker group that around, allows non-root users to run Docker commands. You should not use it. It is bad practice to use the Docker group. Okay. Alrighty. So... So this is a very basic Docker command. The do the the Docker uh, client, we're we're interacting with the Docker client here, and we're saying, "Hey, run the hello world image. Run the hello world image. Are you just supposed to use sudo? Yes. Uh, run the hello world image. Now, hello world. The hello world image was already downloaded um, on my machine, and you can see that if we do Docker image ls. God damn it." Already, I'm demonstrating why you would want to use the Docker group. But you can see, these are all the images. LS is going to list the image command to feed the image command to Docker and give it the LS um, to list off all of the images. You can see that we have a number of images from Hack the Box machines. Uh, we can see we have an isolated Python environment here. Uh, Ubuntu of a specific version and the latest version. Uh, we also have, we're just getting started with the Docker talk, Mr. Robot. We're just getting started. So these are all images that I have, uh, that I've, uh, that I've, that, that I've used in the past. So if, yeah, let's say you're trying to run a Docker image, sudo Docker run. So let's say you're trying to compile an exploit for a CentOS platform. CentOS is a distro of Linux. 
um, uh, that is different from Ubuntu. Um, and you need to be inside of a CentOS environment. Let's say you need to be inside of a set CentOS environment um, specifically to compile this exploit. Does that make sense? Um, so you could either spin up a virtual, a CentOS virtual machine, which means you have to go through all the trouble of getting an ISO and then it's, and then like installing CentOS, uh, in the virtual machine. It's going to take a long ass time, or you could just do this. You do Docker run CentOS. So you see that in this case, Docker could not, I do not have CentOS. So it's uh, it's going to default to the latest version, but you could get CentOS in any version as well. You could get any cent. You could you could put a specific version after this, like uh, Ubuntu 18.04, uh, WordPress 5.51. So if if you find a particular one thing that I do, like for example with Tomcat, um, with Apache Tomcat, let's say I find a local file inclusion vulnerability on Apache Tomcat. Okay, and I know exactly what version of Ata Apache Tomcat uh, is installed, but I don't know if I have a local file inclusion. I want to go looking for tomcatusers.xml and other sensitive files, so I can spin up a Docker container of that specific version of Tomcat, like specifically Tomcat 9.0, and uh, browse and see what where the files are located. And it's still stored locally on my machine. On my machine, it is now. It downloaded from the CentOS from the Docker from the Docker. Um, it downloaded the CentOS um, image from Docker Hub. Uh, we have no containers running, so this time we'll just run CentOS. And we will add tack i for interactive. I think it has to be back here, actually. Tack i, tack t for to allocate a TDY, and we're going to give it a command to execute. So bin bash. Uh, it doesn't look like it has bash installed. Maybe bin sh. Nope. Maybe the TAC IT needs to go before. There we go. It's what it wanted the TAC IT before the thing there. So the TAC I option makes it interactive, meaning it's gonna keep the TT it's gonna keep an interactive terminal open here. TAC T is going to it means allocate a TTY or a pseudo TTY. So we have we now have you now see that we have our prompt is different now. Now we're inside of a CentOS container. We're inside of a virtualized CentOS platform now. And you can see it, um, CentOS Linux release 8.4.2105. And you can see that we are now inside CentOS. Does that make sense, that basic usage of Docker? So now, we can now use, uh, we can now download tools inside of here. This is all, we can, we can still reach the internet from here. We can download tools inside of here. We can compile stuff, we can install stuff, whatever. Then install Docker within CentOS. And, uh, and, and, um, I don't think that would work, actually. I, th I think it would throw an error because, uh, you'd have a problem. You, you would, you would have a problem nesting containers like that. <laughs> this, so this is a, a very, again, a very basic usage of Docker. Okay? It's, it's so easy to use. It is very easy. It is very easy. Do not be scared of it. It can bring you a lot of power. Okay? Okay? 
Uh, so sudo docker image ls. Uh, let's get rid of this. A hunter must hunt. Because I'm going to demonstrate another usage of docker here. sudo docker image rm. So we're going to remove the bloodhound image. Uh, must force. Can I just do tac f to force? There we go. All right. So I deleted the Bloodhound uh, image that I had installed. So it's no longer there anymore. And I'm only doing that so that I can demonstrate to you how to build an image from scratch. Uh, and to build an image from uh, Bloodhound Python GitHub. Uh, hopefully this will have a docker file. It does. Okay, so we'll go ahead and download this. Uh, in order to build a docker image, you need what's called a docker file. Uh, I'll clone it inside of the previous container. Or the previous directory. So we're going to clone this uh, repository. And you're going to see that more and more of these repositories have what's called a docker file. This is to allow you to s easily set up a Docker container um, using uh, uh, with this tool installed in it. Let's take a look at what this is. So this is a this is a Docker specific uh, syntax. Basically, what it's doing is, hey, from means, hey, this is the image you're going to start with. This is the image you're going to start with. Um, basically, you're giving the you're giving Docker the um the information it needs to set up the environment the way that you want like one that fits our super specific requirements yes exactly just the guy i'm teaching you how to i previously told you how to set up how to just start a centos environment on the fly but let's say you want like a very specific tool installed let's say you want a tool installed inside of your container um that's what this docker files are for okay this is what docker files are for so we're starting with the Python image. Um, it's giving, it's, it's putting a label on there. It's giving it a work, to, uh, it's creating a work directory. Uh, it's also creating a Docker volume. We'll talk about those here in a minute. Don't worry about that just right now. Um, now it's going to install a whole bunch of stuff. So you can see that it's, it's, it's updating. It's going to update the operating system. And then it's going to install all of these things inside of the container. Does that make sense? These are all the things that Bloodhound Python needs to run. Okay. And it's 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 and now it is it's installing Impacket. And then it's running the Bloodhound Python. And then it's installing Bloodhound Python. Does that make sense? So this is basically an automated script for setting up a Docker container exactly the way that you want. Does that make sense? APK like Android? Yes. Uh, this is starting with the Alpine image. APK is what Alpine uses. Alpine is also used on Android. Does that make sense? Might sound stupid, but the Docker file is run within the Docker container. We made it, or is this ran on the machine? No, this is run by the Docker client on the machine. I'm going to show you how here in just a second. So we're going to CD into this directory. So now we're, we, we're in the directory with this Docker file. We have to be in the directory with the Docker file when we do this. sudo docker build and we're going to do tac t to name it we'll call it bloodhound uh tac t bloodhound did i not do it right do i need to give it a docker file specifically context must oh i guess it wants uh the directory there it goes so now Bl D docker is is now Doing all those things in the Docker file. You can see it's installing all those dependencies. Does this make sense? What pi what Docker is doing from what is inside of this Docker file? It's installing all of these dependencies. And then it's going to install Bloodhound Python and set it up for us. Don't worry about those errors. Um, we're, we're, you basically always want is root with Docker. So, not always, but usually you will. 
It's going to take a little bit to build the container. Docker is building the container. How do you prune the Docker images after you're done using them? I showed you how already. Uh, Docker image uh, RM. The RM command is for deleting images. So when you build your super awesome pen testing... Yeah. So if you build some kind of tool... Let's say you build a tool that requires a really specific version of Impacket. We, we saw that with... Um, we saw that with uh, Print Nightmare. With Print Nightmare, the POC used like a very specific customized version of Impacket. Uh, a Docker container would have been would have been best for executing that. Does that make sense? Yo, how's it? My sword showed up. You bought a sword? I think I forgot. But yeah, that's what this Docker file is for. It's to preempt all the problems that people are going to have installing your script and using it. And we're done. We are done. It is done building. So now if we do docker image, image ls, god damn it. You can now see we now have Bloodhound back again, created 15 seconds ago. Oh yeah, the, so the one from Security Weekly. That's great. Is it cool? I hope it's cool. So now we have a, yeah, we have a new container called Bloodhound now. So now, how do we execute that? Docker run bloodhound or dash it bloodhound uh now you can execute like um i keep so the, i'm making a good case for the docker group right now I probably wanted that in quotes. So you can see that Bloodhound Python's installed in here. We probably want to put this in quotes. This is the command we're going to run. I don't think we need to do tack IT. I'm doing tack IT out of... How do I just run a single command? I can't remember. I just want to run a single command. I can't remember. Is it doc? It's docker exec. That's right. It is docker exec. You're right. You're absolutely right. I'm in the wrong docker command. I've... I am by no means a docker professional. No such container. Oh, I have to execute it. Docker run bloodhound. Sudo... Docker PS to see what containers are running. The container's not running. We're learning together today, chat. I have to do tech IT. Well, I'm not... I, I, underst I understand how to get a standard out. I'm just trying to show them how to just execute a single command. I just want to show them how to execute a single command. That's all. Oh, he's telling chat, not you? Oh, okay, good. Just making sure. I'm just trying to demonstrate how to execute a single command. The container starts and then it shuts down again. How do I keep the container open? Keep the container running. I can't believe I've forgotten how to do this. Tack T. Okay, docker run tack D, I think, is the one that's intended. I just want the container to run in the background, and then I want to execute a command inside of it. I'm just trying to demonstrate how to execute commands inside containers without actually being inside of it. Yeah. Am 
Why can't I go up? Oh. Okay, well, I don't know why it's doing that. Docker, run. Attack D, Bloodhound. God damn it. There it goes. So now su sudo docker ls. Or docker ps, excuse me. And it's still not running. What the hell? Oh, it has a default command. Docker run tack T dac tack D. There it goes. So let's see it now. There we go. So yeah, the the default command was a shell, so it just it just exits. So now we've got the container. The container is running. Okay. So now if we want to execute a command in there, we can go docker exec. Give the container name. Uh, and then it's tack h. God damn it. I swear to God, I've gotten that error like a million times. Blython, Bloodhound Python executable file not found in path. Uh, God damn it. Zach, tack, IT. Bin bash. There we go. Which bloodhound python user local bin echo dollar path. It's there. It must be using a different path environment variable. So we'll use the full path. Back H. No such file or directory. I mean, it created the sim link. It's there. I don't know why it's... Does anybody know why it's failing? Can we just do ls, I wonder? No such file or directory. I don't know what's going on. No, I'm just trying to... There's an already running container. And I'm just trying to execute a command in it. This container's already running. Try it without quotes. Maybe it's the quotes. Maybe it just doesn't like the quotes. Good call. Let's try that. Oh, there it goes. Never mind. I was overthinking it with the quotes. Well done, tasteless dead beef. We did it. So you just don't want the quotes. I'll, I'm just demonstrating to you how to start up a container and then uh, how to start up a container and execute a command inside of a running container. Does that make sense? Docker run will start a container. Docker exec will um, um, will, ex will uh, execute a command within a running container. Does that make sense? JZ1999 bringing Bokanovich into the... Passionate club of cephalopod enthusiasts. Welcome, my friend. Uh, A4AJ, thank you for the follow. Does that make sense on that basic usage of Docker? Again, this is useful for using tools that require specific dependencies and setups. Uh, like Python 2. Let's say uh, Kali no longer has Python 2 installed by default. And if you try and install Python 2, it's going to fuck up your... It's going to fuck up all of your dependencies... Um, and Kali really doesn't like it. Um, stop writing tools in Python 2, first of all. But if you're in an unfortunate situation where you absolutely need to run something that's written in Python 2, um, then I would rec- that's a perfect situation that Docker can solve. A hunter must that is a situation that Docker can solve perfectly for you. 
Daddy English, thank you for the first time prime indoctrination into the cult. Welcome to the All Has Red team, my friend. Thanks for supporting the stream. Imagine Python 2 in the year of our Lord. Yeah, exactly. Does the container have an IP address? It does. Good question. So let's look at... So we can sudo docker... Is it docker kill? It's docker stop, I think. Sudo docker stop... Containers? Damn it. Uh, sudo docker ls or docker ps to show running containers. We take the container ID here. Sudo docker stop. And we give it the container. And docker will now stop that container. It's going to take a second. There we go. Docker PS, no more containers running. Does that make sense? Did you check out the Web3 ETH Denver event? Are you God no, dude. Web3 is the absolute fucking worst shit imaginable. Web3 is like is like Blade Runner levels of dystopian cyberpunk uh, dystopian cyberpunk hellscape. Like I can't imagine a worse fate for the internet than fucking Web3. I can't, I, Web3 is as bad as, is literally as bad as it possibly could be. It's true. I shouldn't be as hard on Blade Runner. Um, but, uh, Web3 just absolutely fucking, what's Web3 again? It's essentially cryptocurrency made into an entire internet structure. Um, so basically you would need, it would be the entire internet on a blockchain. Um, so what that means is, we would all have tokens that are sitting on world-readable blockchains that anyone and everyone can use to track you. Basically, imagine if there was a cookie in your browser at all times that everybody could see. And every time you browse to any website ever, that cookie checks in with that website. So literally every single person who wants to parse the data can see where you've browsed to, where you specifically browsed to, and when. Brought to you by every fucking, uh, every fucking giant corporation that wants um, consumer protections and privacy completely fucking demolished. Absol it's an absolute joke. Web3 is an absolute fucking joke. It's, it's actually not a joke. It's highly dangerous. Highly dangerous. Anyway, we got off the beaten path there. So, I've made a... So, let's talk about Docker volumes really quickly. I mentioned Docker volumes. Okay? Let's talk about Docker volumes and let's talk about... Let's say that you have a tool and you have to have it listen on a particular port. Okay? You have to have... Docker containers run in an isolated environment as far as, like, let's just do docker, sudo docker run dash it ubuntu, bin bash, there we go. So we're inside of a Ubuntu container here, okay? Let's say that we want our Ubuntu machine to listen on a certain port. We want to set up a netcat listener or something, anything that needs to be able... If we look, if we draw an if config here, do we even have if config? We don't. IPA? We don't even have that. Sudo apt update. Oh, apt update. So containers usually have the absolute bare minimum that they need to function. So you're going to have to install just about anything you want uh, to run in there. apt install if config. How do I, is it, it's like, it's like, it's like IP tools or something is the package. It's, is it IP tools? Is that what it is? Uh, APT install IP tools. It's not there either. IP utils. That sounds right. Still not there.
I just want to show you the networking situation. Net tools, apparently. There it goes. Net tools. Wessel IMP, thank uh Wesley MP, thank you for the follow. Cthulhu Fatten to you, my friend. Okay. If config. Alright, there we go. So we can see that we do have an IP address here, and you can customize the networking information of your Docker container. What you should think of your Docker container as is it's basically uh, using NAT uh, and connecting to the internet using your using your host machine as a gateway. Okay, uh, the gateway is almost always going to be by default. The gateway will be located at uh, 172.17.0.1. I don't even have ping. Uh, apt install ping. Uh, IP utils ping. A hunter must hunt. Okay. Security live bringing Bravo Charlie Romeo into the chat, into the cult. Nop. 90. Welcome, my friend. Thank you so much, Security I Live, for your uh, your continued support of the stream. So we'll go ahead and ping that. And we can see, because we're, we're pinging our host here. And if you're wondering, if we do if config on our host, we'll see that there's a specific interface set up for Docker. This one right here. We see that there's a specific interface set up for Docker, and we see that our IP address on this interface is 172.17.0.1. Okay? This is useful to know if you're pen testing a Docker environment. Like, let's say you've compromised the container. Uh, you can reach the host on 172.17.0.1. That's where it... That's that's the IP address of the host from inside of the I Docker container. Does that, does that make sense, chat? Defense with the four months. Welcome to the All Eyes Red team, my friend. Thanks for supporting the stream. You should do the Oh My Web box. We'll try to do a Docker-related box uh, if we can. Okay. So obvious. So basically, our Docker container, our our Ubuntu Docker container, is reaching the internet through this, using this as a gateway. We cannot access the externally. We cannot access the Docker container directly. Does that make sense? I cannot access it directly under normal circumstances. Under normal circumstances. However, let's say that I want to. Let's exit out of here. Uh, we'll do Stream Raiders here in just a second. Tack P, and we'll say port 18110, 18110. So what this... Tack P is going to do port forwarding. We're setting up port... The, we're telling Docker to set up port forwarding. Hey, I want port 18110 on my Kali to link to port 18110 inside of the Docker container. Does that make sense? We run that again. And now if we do uh, netstat... Do we have netstat? God damn it. Uh, well, if we go over here... And do netstat. Uh, I keep forgetting I'm not in tmux. We can now see that we now have... I have to run that. I'm going to have to sudo that. Sudo. Sudo netstat. Tech nlvp. TCP. Grep. Listen. Okay. I keep trying to... We can see that Docker is using this, is listening on this port. Does that make sense? Does that make sense, chat? Uh, and if we apt install ncat... You're kidding me. apt update... Oh, I just need to update it again. This is what happens when you shut down a container. It starts up fresh. Uh, containers. Oh, this isn't. This is another thing. Under normal circumstances, you can 
change this, but that's a little bit beyond the purview of this discussion. Every time you run a container, it's a fresh, brand new environment. So you have to reinstall all the tools that you wanted inside of it. They're not persistent uh, under normal circumstances. You can make them persistent, uh, but that's kind of beyond the purview of this discussion. They're, yeah, they're, they are not persistent. So you have to reinstall all your tools every time. Install NCAT. Okay. NCAT, Tech NLVP. Or NCAT Tech NL, NLVP eight, uh, 18110. So if we listen on port 18110 and we do NetCat, um, uh, we can reach uh, like uh, 127001 should be fine. 18110. Hello from the host. And you can see that we have connected to our container here. So if you needed to like catch a reverse shell inside of a container, this is how you would have done it. Or if you need uh, to spin up um, a version of Tomcat or um, uh, WordPress or something like that, uh, where there's like a web server running inside of a container, this is how you would do it. You would use the tacp command at the uh, when setting up the container to do port forwarding. Are you listening on all the interfaces? Docker is listening on all the interfaces. Yes, it's listening on all interfaces, all interfaces. Zero Kieran with bringing Angel D into the cult. Welcome, Angel D. Thanks so much, Zero Kieran. Uh, let's do Stream Raiders really quick, and then I'll show you Docker volumes. Do I want to be one with the whale? Uh, you do. Uh, again, Docker is very helpful, fellas. Docker will sit... You don't think you're going to need it now, but I promise you, Docker, if you embrace the usage of Docker, it will, it will save you so much time and effort in the future. It is insane. I promise you... This is information that you want, okay? Even if you're new, even if you're new to this stuff, I promise you that Docker information is information that you want. Um, Docker is incredibly useful um, for being a pen tester. And you don't think, it's not something you're gonna use literally every single day. You're probably not gonna use it literally every single day. However, um, in those moments where you're pulling your hair out because you're having dependency issues you can't figure out, Docker is your savior, okay? I've been saved by Docker on so many occasions. It is so, so, so useful. Uh, I remember one time I was pen testing. Uh, I remember one real world use case. Uh, I was pen testing uh, and I was doing an external penetration test, okay? I discovered a server-side request forgery vulnerability in a web application. Um, the server-side request, and by, when you do server-side request forgery, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to see if there are any ports listening on the local host. And it turns out there was Jenkins listening on the, um, on the local interface. Uh, there, there was Jenkins listening on the, uh, on the loopback interface. Uh, that I could and I could reach Jenkins through the server side request forgery. Um, I was able to figure out which version of Jenkins it was, um, but I was not a, a and but and if you know about Jenkins, I, and it did not have authentication by the way, it was unauthenticated, so I could just connect to it. And Jenkins has a script console uh, that allows you to execute Java, um, so I could get remote code execution if I could. Um, access that script console um, but I did I had to craft the request um, like because obviously I'm doing it through a server-side request forgery so I needed to specially craft the request so I spun up Jenkins in a docker container I spun up that version of Jenkins into a docker container um, did the port forwarding just like uh, just like you see here so I could access Jenkins and I used it to craft my request to the script endpoint 
and I was able to get remote code execution. Docker is fantastic um, for little things like that. So if you reboot the host to state it, no. If you stop a container, containers are uh, ephemeral, not persistent by default. So if you stop a container, it gets wiped. It's uh, it's and if you stop a container and then start it up again, yeah, you're you're starting it up again as a complete fresh new environment. If it, containers are not persistent by default, you can make them persistent, um, but I don't really have a whole lot of use case for that. Honestly, there's not a whole lot of use case for a persistent container in my line of work. Ooh, ah, Toad, 237. Thank you for the follow. Alert document cookie in the Firefox Dev Tools console props up an alert with the cookie of the web page I was testing. Is this really an XS XSS volume? No. No, I would not call that. I would say what the... I would say that means that the cookie is a... It, it actually... The joke is on you, FDS sec, because I think I would call that a vulnerability. Do you know why? I think I would call that a vulnerability. I wouldn't call it a cross-site scripting vulnerability. But what would I call it? What is the actual vulnerability there? It's not self-inflicted XSS. It's not cross-site scripting. It's not information disclosure. It means that the cookie does not have the HTTP only flag. If JavaScript is able to access, if JavaScript in your browser is able to access the cookie, that means that the cookie does not have the HTTP only flag set. Which is, I would call that a vulnerability. I would call it a low vulnerability if there isn't a cross-site scripting uh, vulnerability to go along with it. If the HTTP only flag is not set and there's a cross-site scripting vulnerability, I would call that a high. That's a high. Easy high vulnerability. That would be a good finding on, this, on a report. Easy high. If you can, if you can use cross-site scripting to access the user's cookies, easy high. Uh, on the uh, on the uh, uh, severity index. Stored or reflected? Reflected is medium. I would call reflected high. I would call both. I would say stored is more significant, uh, but I would still put reflected at a high. Uh, Yuli says Sigma. Thank you for the follow. Cthulhu Fatten to you, my friend. Most bounty programs want cookie leakage for XSS reports these days. Yeah. XSS isn't going to be as severe if you are if you don't have cookie leakage. If you have... Th this is the thing about vulnerabilities, guys. You can't look at cross-site scripting and say, oh, that's a high or that's a medium or as a, as a whole. Like, vulnerabilities all need to be taken in context. If you find cross-site scripting, but it's in an isolated domain or a sandbox domain, uh, or you don't have cookie leakage, or there's no cross-site request forgery or anything, I would say that the cross-site scripting is a medium. I would put it at a medium. Um, if there's cross-site request forgery or cross-site or, or um, uh, cookie leakage, I would put it at a high. Are we just learning about Docker today? We're going to do a box. We're going to do a box, but I was asked specifically to explain the usage of Docker. One more thing. We're going to do one more thing. Exit out of here. So let's say... Let's say we want to be able to access something uh, on, on the host file system. Uh... Okay, let's say we want to access something on the host file system from within the container. Does that make sense? By the way, stop the presses. Stop the presses. Everybody, shut up. Shut up. Shut up, everybody. I just got a notification on my machine that said Helen of Tor is playing Elden Ring. She's been she's been holding out on us for for a week now 
for over a week she's had it. She's had the game. And she keeps making excuses not to play it. Um, she keeps making excuses not to play it. I don't care. I don't care if she's. I don't care if she's playing it. By the way, I just think it's f uh, during the stream. I just think it's funny. I, I'm not trying to call her out for like slacking on her mod duties. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it's shocking she's actually sacking up and playing the game. That's what I'm saying. I'm not. It's not shame. I'm not shaming her. I'm saying it's a good thing. That she's actually playing the hard video game that she said she was going to play. Alright, we're back to it. I'm not shaming her. Anyway. So. So. Let's say we want to like... Uh, let's say we want to access resources on the host within the container. Within the container. So you would want to mount a directory inside of the container. So what you would do use for that is Docker volumes. So we would do this. Uh, let's take away the port forwarding. You can obviously do both of these at once, but I'm just going to show off. Just it's the TAC V option, and we're going to be mounting home Alhazred uh, Docker explanation. Uh, to ma uh, mount Docker explanation. Okay. So this is the folder on the host that you want mounted inside of the container. Okay. This is the folder inside of the container that you want it mounted to. Honestly, listen. I found Elden Ring. I spent I the first couple hours of Elden Ring... Honestly, not too bad. Uh, honestly, I was like, this is much more forgiving than most. The tree sentinel gave it to me for a little while until I realized that I needed to fight him on the horse. Uh, so I was just being an idiot. The tree sentinel was teaching me to use the fucking horse. Um, so uh, it was teaching me to use the horse. Uh, so once I used the horse, he was trivial, uh, basically. But... Uh, and I was like, oh, this is this is actually surprisingly approachable. This is surprisingly easy. And then I got absolutely my rectum split open by Margit the Fell Omen for like two fucking hours. Like just absolutely got my goddamn rectum split by Margit the Fell Omen for like two fucking hours. It was it was a yikes. Uh, did you, did I watch the Batman? I did watch the Batman, yes. Uh, I, I gave my thought, I gave my brief thoughts on what I thought of it on the last stream. Um, I'm going to avoid spoilers here, uh, in case anyone would still like to see it. Why is mounting necessary to access local resources inside the Docker container? Yes. If you want to access a local, a resource on the host inside of the Docker container, this is how you do it. Okay. Okay. So, now if we go to... We're in the root container, so we do ls-tac-la. Uh, if we go into mount, because remember we put it in the mount directory. We can see that there's a folder here called docker explanation. And we can see that the contents of our folder on the host are, insi are accessible inside of this container. Does that make sense? I was around level 50 before I bothered with Margit. See, that was the trick. See, I just kind of went there. I wasn't intending to, like, do the plot. I didn't even think I was doing the plot yet. Uh, they basically pointed to some castle on a hill and said, you're going to want to go in that direction. And I just immediately fucked off in the other direction because that's how I do open world games. I just immediately fucked off in the other direction. But somehow I made my way up to that castle without realizing it. At level 14? Level 14? And just got my rectum split open by this dipshit with a staff. It was... Jesus fucking Christ, he gave me a hard time. It was like the orphan of... It wasn't even the Father Gas Coin. It was the orphan of cause of the early game. And then at the end, I was like, what level was I supposed to be for that? Because that was obnoxious. And it turns out that it's recommended that you be at least level 20 with summons to help you. So, I did 
I was level 14 with no summons, so... There are videos of people... Dude, already there are going to be people... Like, this is the, the classic Soulsborne thing. People have been doing it with dance pads already, okay? Fucking dance pads already being bust, busted out over here. Um, yeah, there are mu people much better than me. Uh, but that guy absolutely split my asshole open. Like, it was rough. Um, I really wish I had started with the shield class. The shield would have made it easier, I think, in my opinion. Uh, Jesus, he was hard. Holy crap. But uh, the reason he was hard is be- What- the thing is, I was supposed to go fuck off and do something else. That's the nice thing about this game. I'd, I'd say this game is more approachable to new Soulsborne people. Um, uh, I would say this game is more approachable to people new to Soulsborne games. Because normally in Dark Souls, like, you're in an area and you just butt up against the... You hit a boss and if you keep dying to him, your only option is to either continue trying the boss and keep attempting it, or to go back to previous areas and farm souls. Um, but in this, you don't have that. If you're having a hard time, if you run into Margit and you're having a hard time, just go fuck off and do some of the other, like, fucking 20 hours of content that's in the first area. Like, there's so much content in the very first area, it's insane. Just go fuck off and do other stuff and come back at a higher level. That's it. There's more content. There's more stuff you can do. I was just stubborn, so I was like, no, I'm not letting this guy fucking... I'm not letting this guy fucking beat me. It's tree Sentinel? The key is the horse. Use the horse. Okay? All right, so that's how Docker volumes work. Does anybody have any questions about Docker containers in general? Again, there, there's a lot more nuanced introduction to Docker containers. I will show you some things that I have. Uh, that make it a little bit easier. Uh, so let's go to my home directory. Do I have it in bash RC? Or do I have it in an alias file? I think I just have it in bash RC. So let's take a... Or ZSHRC. Uh, less ZSHRC. Let's go down. Okay, right here. So I've defined some aliases specific to docker uh you can see i have docker shell uh and docker shell sh which is docker shell you see that all this is doing is creating a new command that will run this for me right here uh and then uh this one is the same thing but it just uses bin sh instead of bin bash because not all containers will have bash installed some will just have sh um and then we have docker shell here which is just mounting my per current working directory inside of the container. And uh, Docker Shell SH here, which is the same thing, but with bin SH again. Okay. So these are two aliases that I use to help my personal workflow. So if I just run uh, Docker Shell Ubuntu, you can see, you can see that this is why I keep forgetting to put the sudo at the beginning, because I usually run with these aliases. What image does it run? It, you just feed it an image. Uh, I, I give it whatever image I want to run, and it just inputs that image in there. Does that make sense? Uh, so if I want to mount my present working directory inside of the container, I can do docker shell here, Ubuntu. And we've got our current working directory mounted inside of the container. They're just simple shortcuts that I use that improve my workflow. Does that make sense? Niftinger, Kohler SW, and uh, Metan. Thank you for the follow. Cthulhu Fountain to you, my friend. I might have to... I'm still confused. I might have to watch the VOD after the stream. Sure. That's fine. Watch the VOD after the stream and hopefully it'll make sense. Are those in the Necronomicon? I can put them in the Necronomicon if you'd like. Um... Let me just... I could just paste them in the chat, probably. I'm not, like, trying to keep them secret or anything. They're just... Again, this isn't, like, some super secret thing that I don't give you guys access to. Like, these are just simple aliases that I've created just to because this is how I usually use Docker, and it makes it easier for me. Let's just take this. You can just put this into your... Yeah, I just pasted them in chat. There you go. I just pasted them in chat there, uh, chat. So if you want them, uh, if you want my aliases there, you can, you can, uh, you can take them. Very, very simple stuff. 
Um, I just put them in your ZSH or Bash RC file so that uh, they'll be loaded into your shell. Does that make sense? Mandiant uh, announced that it acquired a definitive agreement to be acquired by Google. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. I don't understand the slash mount things. Is it read only or something? No, it's not. It's you have read and write access inside of the container to a folder on your host machine. Does that make sense? Better than Microsoft? Yeah, it was rough when Microsoft was encountered was uh, uh, acquired was GitHub was required by uh, acquired by Microsoft. Does this make changes on the host? You can. There are security implications. If someone gains access to your container to your running container, they can access a folder on the host. On the host. <clears throat> All right, let's do try hack me. Let's do a box. If you have questions about Docker, feel free to ask. Let me get logged in to try hack me. And we'll pick a box. We'll try to pick something Docker related. It looks like the hazy cracker is recommending Oh My Web. Is this Docker related? Oh My Web server is Docker? Okay, what's the difficulty? Medium? All right, well, medium is okay for Newbie Tuesday, I guess. It's not, have you, if you've done it, the hazy cracker, is it appropriate? It's an easy medium? Okay, all right. I'll, I'll I, again, I like to keep it as easy as possible for Newbie Tuesday. I don't want to lose anybody. I'll try and explain everything as much as possible. Since today is a Docker day, apparently, um, it makes sense to uh, to do a Docker-related machine so we can enhance our understanding of Docker. Okay. I'm logging into my account. Okay, we're logged in. Alrighty. So it was Oh My Web. Is it this one? Yeah. Do we want to do do we want to do this one or we do we want to do an easy one, chat? I'll let chat decide. I'll let chat decide. I just read chat. You weren't getting shamed. I just said I was surprised I was that you started up Elden Ring. I can see you starting Elden Ring because of Steam notifications. Steam is still running on my machine, and that uh, it showed me a Steam notification that you that you started up Elden Ring. And I was like, hell has frozen over. Elden Ring has been. Uh, Helen has started Elden Ring. Oh, fit deck. Good time for a fit deck. It's a good time for a fit deck. Crunches. Especially, apparently a few devs at other AAA companies were getting a tad jealous of Elden Ring's success. Fucking suck it, dude! Make games better! Fucking tough! FromSoft is the best fucking is the be is the best company in the fucking industry right now. Stop being pay to play fucking bullshit. Make a good strong single player story driven experience and we'll all love it just as much as Elden Ring, okay? Yeah, but think of the shareholders. Exactly. From Software is like the only company in the industry that isn't feeding us fucking microtransaction pay-to-play fucking bullshit. If, to be clear, that's not the devs' fault. It's not the devs' fault that the games are laden with microtransactions these days. That's Those are executive decisions, not dev decisions. But, um, 
it's it's not a it's not a coincidence that we like Elden Ring a lot, and it's not it's not burdened with microtransactions and all that fucking stupid multiplayer bullshit. All right, looks like Oh My Web is getting started. Salad Fingers OG, thanks for the follow. There we go. Uh, Caldero, Calderon Diego, thank you for the follow. Go ahead and join the room. Alrighty, let's start the machine. Alrighty. So we'll get that started. Okay, delete that. I didn't have to change directories into that directory. It's fine. All right, we're connecting to the VPN. No hacking happening just yet. In order to access this Try Hack Me machine that we're spinning up here, we need to be connected to their VPN, which we've done here. Try Hack Me has instructions for that on their website uh, when you make an account for how to connect. Uh, Zap is indeed my favorite tool ever. It's my favorite tool to hate. Uh, oh, my web. Tmux new tech s, oh, my web. Okay. All right, we're waiting for the machine to start up here. Evil Baza, thank you for the follow. All right, I think the box is basically spun up now. 10, 10, 7, Okay. So right off the bat, we can see that we are we are hitting a Linux machine uh, because the time to live is 64 or less. I think LXC is like the poppy of Docker. I believe Docker is actually a wrapper around LXC. It uses LXC under the hood. I think. Don't quote me on that. Okay, so we're going to launch an Nmap scan. SV for enumerate scripts. SV for enumerate versions. ON to output the results into a file called Nmap. Uh, and 101733. So again, that's this option gives deep, runs default enumeration scripts. It'll give us more detailed output. 
Tac SV is gonna run, uh, is gonna do version enumeration. It's gonna try and enumerate the versions of the software we're dealing with. Uh, this is output the results to a file so we can save them for later. And Tac V is for verbose mode, so we get this nice uh, verbose output. We do see port 22 and 80 open right off the bat, so let's go ahead and browse to those. 10, 10, 733. Okay, so we do see uh, some kind of a web server here. Use TACSS, min rate to fat. Yeah, certainly there's other there's other things you can add. Um, those are just the options I prefer to go with. Everyone's got their preferred nmap options. So we're scrolling through here, trying to see what we're dealing with. View page source. We can take a look at the page source. FBI, open up! Oh my god, Parsons is coming for us. We hit F12 again, chat. We've decoded the HTML source code. It doesn't look like there's anything here that's terribly interesting. Are there any CMS? A lot of CSS stuff, but it's a pretty big page, so. Uh, let's try, uh, leave a message. Uh, test, test at test.com, test. Does this do anything? 404 not found, but we do see a contact.php in the assets page. So let's go ahead and uh, put that into our notes just for in case for the future. You've crossed the line. I have crossed the line. I've I've done too much. I've gone too far this time. Uh, is there a robots.txt? Always something to check for. Robots.txt is used by search engines to decide what what pages to index on a particular page. Um, so it may give us some clues as to what pages are available. There is not a robots.txt, so let's click around. The first thing you should do on every web server that you test is just click around a little bit. Yeah, so it looks like all of these just lead to... When it the looks stars like were right, they could plunge from world to world through the sky, but when, when the, stars the stars were, were wrong, wrong, they could, they not, could live. not live. Yeah, the call of Cthulhu. Thank you, Year Zero. Welcome back to the All Has Red team for 12 months. Happy anniversary, pra happy anniversary, baby. Uh, we do see support at UI Deck. You want to take note of all emails that you see. Uh, UIDeck.com. Seems interesting. We might want to put that into our Etsy hosts file. Uh, posted by Elon Musk. This looks like kind of just like the kind of intelligible bullshit he would post. Posted by Fiona. This is her swamp. John Doe. If I thought these were legitimate uh, usernames, I would take note of them, but I don't think they're legitimate. This looks like it's just basic content. Is there, there's a download page. Oh, it brings me down here. Sign up now. Sign up. That doesn't seem to lead anywhere. Okay, so we can start GoBuster here. Uh, let's do that in a different directory. Or a different pane. GoBuster. 1010, 10, was it 733? Yeah. 10, 10, 7, uh, Let's turn this up to 50 threads. I had it on low threads for... Uh, TAC U is for... So we're going to do a directory brute force on this web server just to reveal any pages, um, any directories here that might be interesting to look at. Uh, this is the word list we're going to use for the brute force. This is the number of threads we're using. 
Um, this is the target. Okay, so it's brute forcing. We, we already knew about the assets directory because of uh, contact.php. So we'll let that run a little bit. Let's go look back at uh, nmap scan, see if there's anything here that's of interest to us. So we're seeing OpenSSH 8.2. That's fairly up to date. Uh, what's the most recent version of uh, OpenSSH 8.2 P1 Ubuntu Launchpad? We can see what version of Ubuntu shipped with that version of uh, uh, SSH. It looks like it was Ubuntu Focal. Uh, and we can also check the Apache version. Apache... Two point four point four nine Ubuntu Launchpad. So when you okay, so when you Google a version of a when you Google Google a software version, and the first thing you see is a CVE, that's going to be something to look at. That's going to be something to take a look at. What is this? Attacker could use a path, path traversal attack to map URLs to files outside directories configured by alias-like directories. If files outside of these directories are not projected by the usual default configuration, could allow for remote code execution. Ubuntu was not vulnerable. So sometimes they're just not vulnerable, huh? 49 and 50 was vulnerable to traversal double encoding for dot 50. Oh, okay. Haven't found it to work on other machines. It just says Unix. So this is interesting. Usually, usually when we Google, like when, when we do Nmap scans with the TAC SC, TAC SV, it gives us like a, a, a version of the distro. Like, like right up here, it says Ubuntu. That will usually be the case down here for Apache. With Apache, it'll usually tell us the specific Linux distro that this is specific to. But this one just says Unix. And since this is vulnerable to a CVE, I think that might be the path. What do you guys think? So this is actually pretty good because you want to make sure that you're... When you you look at your port scans, okay? Look at your port scan output, all right? So many times, I guarantee... Like, you're going to have a lot... When, when you're on your OSCP exam, when you're on your... Uh, when you're on a real pen test... You're going to have scan output. Make sure you read it properly. Like, don't just look at it. Like, oh, port 22 and 80 is open. Don't just look at it. Read what Nmap is saying to you. This sticks out to me because usually it would have Ubuntu. I, I, I feel like that would have escaped a lot of like people less experienced. Just because... I feel like that would have uh, escaped um, people who are less less experienced just because it's just a lot of output and not everyone reads every word of output that they see. But you want to make sure that, especially when you're new to this stuff, because this is Newbie Tuesday, that you are reading the output of your tools properly. Uh, yeah, the, H the uh, trace method used to be risky. Um... Uh, Sarsec is saying it used to be an XSS vector. I don't think it is anymore, but it's still labeled as risky. I don't know that for sure. Uh, I've never labeled, called it a finding on, a, on an assessment. I've never really found Trace to be a finding. Uh, so let's take a look at that Apache. Let's start a full Nmap scan of all ports first. We want to take away these because it's going to take too long. Let's do TAC P TAC. To scan all ports, all 65,535 TCP ports. And then we'll take a look at this CVE. Uh, exploit. 
So it's like a path traversal vulnerability. Perfect. Exploit DB. That's what we like to see. Okay, so we got a POC here. Path traversal and remote code execution. So it's just a bash script. POC.sh targets.txt. Uh, what is, is this the output file? Oh, so it's, it looks like this is the output file. Interesting. So there's a weird, anyway, well, let's just, we don't need to know in depth what this is doing just yet. Targets.txt is our hosts. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Uh, let's just kill GoBuster. I don't think it's going to find anything if it hasn't yet. So vim target, uh, well, vim poc.sh. We'll paste this in. Looks like we have a little spelling error here. Not that that really matters, I don't think. Vim targets .text. Uh, 10, 10, 7, 33. Shamad plus X, uh, POC.sh, make it executable. POC.sh targets.txt Etsy pass WD. Uh, server encountered an internal error. Looks like it didn't work. Oh, but it executed code. It looks like it executed code. Yeah. So Etsy pass WD seems to be throwing an error, but it is executing code. Yeah. Wow. So it looks like we do have, we looks like we do have remote code execution. Can I put this in quotes? Uh, it looks like it does not want that. It does not want quotes. All right, so let's get a reverse shell then. Let's do. If config ton zero to get our IP address 10.14.9.41. We're gonna use uh, the Hack Tools browser extension. You can download this for Firefox or Chrome uh, to generate a reverse shell for us. Uh, can I execute bin bash, I wonder? Bin bash ID? Okay, it does work. So bash is present on the target. Okay. Then bash. And let's see if we get a reverse shell here. It did not. Uh, it's probably bad characters or something. Uh, let's do... doesn't want quote uh it doesn't like quotes can i put quotes around this yeah it might be curl into bash time i'm trying to write i'm going to try and write files to the server to see if it works
Not found. A hunter must hunt. So I could have written it to the wrong place. Let's do bin bash ls tac la. Okay, so we can see which directory we're in here. Uh, let's do bin bash var dub dub dub. There's no var dub dub dub. So that explains why we couldn't write to that folder. Uh, we can probably feed it our reverse shell one liner now. Like this. This can probably be in double quotes. Now it's hanging. That's good news. There we go. Hackerman. I'm in. Alrighty. Does that make sense to everybody? What we, what we did there? That was very OSCP like. That was very spot on for like OSCP. Uh, where you you do an nmap scan, you look at all the ports, you read the output, you see you observe, you observe like my like my my boy Arthur Conan Doyle. You see, but you do not observe. You must observe. Okay, you must observe. Uh, we looked at the nmap output. We identified that the the Apache install was non-standard. First of all, remember recall that. What drew our attention to Apache version, because usually we don't even bother with Apache's version, because Apache doesn't tend to be vulnerable to very much. But, in this case, this is a special case that we noted that OpenSSH was showing as Ubuntu, but this is showing as Unix. So, this is not the default Apache install of the Ubuntu server, is the point I'm trying to make. So someone installed Ubuntu and then installed this Apache separately. That's what we've determined. Um, and, it, and, the, and the particular version of Apache they installed has this CVE. Does this make sense? This is where it's valuable to make sure you're reading the output so you don't miss stuff like this. Q0, thank you for the first time prime indoctrination into the cult. Welcome to the All House Red Team. To be honest, thank you for the follow. Is this considered shell shock? Does this not target CGI bin? Uh, I don't think it was targeting CGI bin directly. It was targeting the CGI directory. Oh, it is CGI bin. Uh, so, I believe it's echoing. So, what is this actually doing? Echo content type plane. Echo just puts a new line. $3. Uh, is there an explanation? Let's see if we can look up the explanation of the exploit really quickly. We'll open this in a new folder. Okay, here's a nice blog post on it. Vulnerable to path traversal and remote code execution. Uh, new code change. So it doesn't result. Uh, so it's so what we're ha what we're seeing here is that Apache apparently does not resolve URL encoded values like it should. Um, dot percent two e is the URL encoded version of a period a dot. So Apache does not recognize this as a dot. It does not decode it. When you are all encoding the second dot, the logic fails to recognize it as a dot. So it bypasses the check. Okay, so it's it's bypassing a check for path traversal. So it's a path traversal, but where does the remote code execution come in? Yeah, so this is bypassing a check. This is allowing it's we're getting CGI bin. Um, and then doing a path traversal to access Etsy pass WD, essentially. The vulnerability can be further exploited to conduct remote code execution. 
when the mod CGI module is enabled on the Apache HTTP server. So Apache needs to have the mod CGI module installed. If it is, you can you can execute a binary on the system because that's how CGI bin works. The mod CGI binary allows Apache to execute binaries on the system. Uh, that's uh, it's supposed to be binaries inside of CGI bin. Does that make sense? Um, mod CGI is only supposed to allow the execution of binaries inside CGI bin. But if there's a if there's a path traversal, you can you, and you can see right here that we're going inside of CGI bin here, and then we're path traversaling out to get to bin bash. Does that make sense? Hello, Mor the morph. Does that make sense, chat? So we're executing bin bash and then giving it arguments to execute. Hopefully that makes sense. Pretty cool. All right, so. So one thing we can note right off the bat is that we're in a Docker container. Someone, the only reason I had assumed that we were in a Docker container is because somebody said this was Docker related. Um, but one telltale sign that you're inside of a Docker container is you can just CD into the root directory and there will be this Docker env file. Um, that reveals that we're inside of a Docker container. Does that make sense? So we, we're not actually on the host. Don't get too excited. I, I understand you all have your dicks in your hands already. Already your, your, your chubby fingers are fully clasped, clasped around the penis you haven't seen in at least five years. And you guys, you guys are ready to go. Okay. You guys are, you guys are good to fucking go. All right, but don't get too excited because we're not on the host. We're not on the host here. Whoa, can Al see me? Yes, I see everything. Okay, so now we're inside of a Docker container and we need to escape the Docker container onto the host. Does that make sense? We're not content with just being in, the, in a Docker container. So let's see what networking information we have. So remember, this looks very similar to what we saw when I showed you how Docker handles networking. Do you guys remember? I did a whole explanation of this. Where is the gateway? What is Docker's gateway by default? What IP address will be the doc the do will be Docker's gateway? What IP address of is it? I know it's the host. Thank you. No, it's not the loopback. It's not 172.2.0.1. It's 172.17.0.1. This one is 172.17.0.2, which is the default. You can change this IP um, and give it uh, custom IP information, but the default is going to be... Uh, a sequentially ordered IP address based on the other containers you have installed. And the gateway is going to be at 172.17.0.1. So we can ping it. No, we don't have ping. But let's see if we can curl it. Which curl? We do have curl. And looky here. We do appear to have a web server that's accessible on the host. Is this the same one? God, God of War is so good. Business consultancy agency template. Yeah, it's this the same it's the same thing. It looks like uh, it looks like it's um it's just forwarding ports. This is Docker port forwarding. Uh, this this web server I believe is running inside of the container. If it wasn't, we would have a uh, shell on the host. Uh, so this is uh so uh so one script that's useful uh for this um is like uh is deep ce get pull let's do a sudo get pull 
So Deep CE is like Lin P's, but for Docker specifically. Deep CE is going to scan the Docker container for common Docker related misconfigurations and vulnerabilities. So we can curl uh, 10.7.33. Uh, let's go into dev SHM actually. Curl HTTP colon slash slash uh, 10.14.9.41 deepce.sh Could not resolve host. Uh, which Python 3? Python 3 dash C. I never stabilized my shell. So we're going to use Python to spawn a pseudo TTY. Is it lowercase? Okay, it's lowercase. Thank you. Apes together strong. I was probably thinking W get. I think I was probably thinking W get. There we go. Okay. Jamad plus X deep C E. Oh, is it? God damn it. So in this case, if we look at mount, if we just do mount, uh, mount command, uh, grep shm we see that dev shm is mounted as no exec so you can't execute files from there we'll go into temp instead move shm deep ce dot sh okay so we're running a uh it looks like we do have some capabilities. Cap DAC override. Let's see what we have here. <laughs> so it has output similar to Win Lin P's, like per usual. We have Python, we have What what is this but like what are these cap what file are these capabilities on? It's saying current, but I'm honestly not sure what it means by current. What is this tool? This is DeepCE. DeepCE.sh. It is a tool for enumerating Docker containers. It doesn't look like it found anything that's I'm interested in this, but it says current. I don't know what current means. Like, what executable is it in? All right, let's just run linpeas and see if we can escalate inside of the container. What is going on? Did I lose my shell? What's happening here? Something fucky is happening. I don't know what's going on. I, I, not, my pain is completely not responding. Like, I can't change Tmux pains. I can't change Tmux pains. I can't do anything. Uh, Ominous with the... Setting up his... Turning his Prime Gaming sub to a Tier 1 sub. He knows he's going to be coming back. Ominous knows what's good. Welcome, Ominous. Bicky B. Hiya. Thank you for the follow. Quickster, thank you for the follow. Dio Valente, thank you for the follow. Press Q. I did press Q many times. It's not working. God damn it. 
Yeah, I get it. I'm gonna have to kill it. I don't know what's wrong with it. So we're gonna have to get a shell again. Uh, CD into... What was it called? Oh My Web Server? Oh, no. CD try hack me. I, I pressed Q many times. Stop saying press Q. I pressed it many, many times. In before stop molding redemption. And maybe I can just attach the session. See, it's completely crashed. See, I'm pressing Q. Oh, wait, it did work. Okay, it worked that time. Actually, you know what I think it you know what I think it was? I think I was hitting caps lock. I think I was hitting caps lock. I was hitting I had caps lock enabled. But I was hitting Q chat. Listen, chat. That doesn't mean you win, okay? That doesn't mean you win. Don't stop it, chat. Stop. Like, you're all being so goddamn smug. I don't need it. I tried hitting Q. Fucking chat. Sudo Python 3. Pull down Linpiece. Fuck off, Mr. Robot! We're gonna pull Linpiece down and run that now. Okay. So we're going to execute Linpees and we're going to pipe it in. What? Yes, I know cap DAC override. I don't know what it means in this context. Like, it's that capabilities are on files. What does current mean? I don't know what current means. Yeah, I get that. By bypass file, read, write, and execute permission checks. Can we just cat Etsy pass WD? Or at cat Etsy shadow, maybe? Yeah, we don't have that capability right now. Uh, it's root. Uh, no, it needs to be recur. I think it wants to attack R before that. I swear I'm going to tell Helena Tor to throw a shoe at you. Well, that, that would be a, quite a feat. Okay, well, it didn't say this in Deep CE, so chat doesn't get to be... You have a try harder redemption? Who has a try... Who? Angel D! Angel D! I did hit Q! I've been over this. Caps Lock was on. My computer went AWOL on me. And I couldn't smack it like I do your mother when she goes AWOL on me. So don't tell me to stop molding. Tell your mother to stop molding. Give her a smack for me. All right. So we do see that uh, Python, th uh, Python has the set UID capability, which makes this real easy for us because... As the set UID capability indicates, um, the ca so what are capabilities? It is Newbie Tuesday. It is Newbie Tuesday, so let's explain what capabilities are. Um, so capabilities are a relatively new feature in Linux that allow you to fine-tune permissions uh, for a file. Um, so if you need it, uh, for example, P 
ping uh, needs to be able to access raw sockets. The ping, uh, the ping command needs to be able to access raw sockets. So it will have the capability to execute raw sockets uh, without having to be at set UID. As in, ping won't need to run his root every single time. It'll just have the permission to access raw sockets with that proper uh, capability. You can see that over here if we do get cap, tack r for recursive, uh, the root directory to dev null. You should be able to see ping. I believe ping should have the file, the cap, the the uh, the sockets capability. So we see some other stuff I have that have capabilities. Here you go. So ping has the net raw capability, which is allows it to access raw sockets. Ping is not installed in the container, so you can't see that. Uh, but if a, if a file has the set UID capability, that means that the file can change its own user ID at will. Um, which means we could just execute Python 3, and we can go import OS to import the OS library. OS dot uh, set UID zero. Uh, it doesn't want a string, it wants an integer. OS dot set GID zero. Okay, I can't set my group ID then. So I can now I can execute OS dot system. Uh, bin bash and we are root so we set our user ID to zero because we have the set UID capability who is what which user has the set you has the user ID of zero chat root root now I know you're all again Dicks in hand, chubby fingers wrapped firmly around your dirty socket or your dirty pipe, okay? But don't get too excited because we are root inside of the container. We are root inside of the container. We still need to pivot to the host, okay? Couldn't figure the rest out and that's why I'm here. Um, well... I have some guesses. The n in the name of the room. This is kind of a silly thing, a CTF thing, but the name of the room gives me a hint of what we might be looking for. Let's do stream raiders really quickly. Uh, Quabs and Drime, thank you for the follows. Use dirty pipes to escape the container? Um, well, I can't get onto the... Uh, I, uh, I can't... It's not a remote code execution vulnerability, so I do need to execute code on the container somehow to get dirty pipes to run on it what is this game this is just a silly uh this is stream raiders it's just a silly game we play in addition to the hacking that we do if you want to play with us it is free uh just exclamation point battle and you can click on the link and enter your twitch credentials uh in this totally not phishing um it's really not a phishing scam um um but just you have to log into that website with your twitch credentials and you can play with us it is free, if you would like. Jifferam popping off. Nice. Lots of streamers. Yeah, stream raiders is pretty common these days. Lots of streamers use it. 
Okay, so we're root inside of the container, but now we need to pivot to the host. So again, the host is located relative to the container. The host is at 172.17.0.1. Uh, we don't have ping, though. Uh, can we SSH inside of the container, I wonder? Is there anything in the root directory that we can look at? Oh, there is a user.txt. I had forgotten we need a flag. So we have our user.txt here. Okay, where is... Try hack me. Here it is. Okay, so there's a couple of things that we can do here. Okay? There's a couple of things that we want to be doing at this point. Okay? We want to... We want to pivot to the host. Pivot! <laughs> pivot! Pivot! <laughs> pivot! <laughs> pivot! <laughs> so we're trying to pivot to the host. We have two things that we can do here, potentially. We, we want to... I want to scan the host. I would like to scan the host uh, for any ports that might be open on the host, right? There are two ways you can do this. Uh, there are two easy ways. Uh, the one way that I would probably use, um, just in general, and there's a different way. So... The one, the one that I would generally use, and that you've seen me use on this stream many times, if you're if you've been around, um, is that I would use Chisel. I would upload Chisel to the box, and uh, use Chisel to set up port forwarding uh, through this host to access, or through this um, container to access the host. Okay. The number two thing we can do is we can use a standalone. We can upload a standalone binary of Nmap. Uh, I'm going to use Chisel because I can run other other tools through it. It's more versatile. Uh, opt uh, Chisel. Chisel is port is a port forwarding tool written in Go uh, that I use frequently on real assessments and in CTFs. Curl. 10.14.9.41 Chisel Taco Chisel Shamad Plus X Chisel Okay Go make some chonky binaries So it is going to take a second to upload Because it's big The tasteful thickness of it. There we go. Alright, so Chisel has two halves. You need to set up the server first. Chisel server reverse port 18110. Okay. Chisel client. Uh, we're reaching out to 10.14.9.41. On port, is it colon? I can never remember this. I use this tool all the time. Chisel port forwarding. I use this all the time, and I can never remember if it uh, what the client syntax is. It wants the colon. Okay, it wants the colon. Okay, now we need to set up the port forwarding syntax. We want to forward our. Uh, we're just going to set up a socks proxy. I'm going to set a socks. Yeah, R socks. Okay. All right, we're connected. So we did connect, and now if we check. Or no, it's netstat. We can see the chisel is now listening on port 18110. And we are also listening on port 1080. Port 1080 is where... Uh, port 1080 is where the SOX proxy is listening. Okay? So now, 
we we do need proxy software to act to use this proxy properly uh the most common one or the one that i use is proxy chains Uh, it's probably I I just want to know where my what, what configuration file it's using I just want to know what configuration file it's using it's using this one Okay, we need, need to change our proxy chains dot conf Is it a sox fry? Yeah 1082 it needs to be using 1080 Port 1080, because that's the port that our proxy is listening on. Now we can end map. And you'll see that now if we just proceed any command that we want to run with proxy chains 4, uh, proxy chains, our end map will go through the proxy. Now, this is going to take fucking forever. Um, proxy chains is very slow. It's notoriously slow. So, But what I like about it is it gives this nice verbose output. Um, so, I'm going to cheat a little bit here. I'm not really cheating, um, but I'm taking from the name of the box. I know what I sh probably should be looking for. There's a vulnerability, relatively recent, CVE 2021-38647 called Oh My God. Um, this is an Azure, uh, Microsoft Azure related vulnerability uh, that involves uh, the OMI service that runs on Linux agents set up in Microsoft Azure, um, except basically accepting uh, requests with no authentication, uh, essentially. It was it was found to eat you could you could bypass the authentication and uh, execute code remotely um, so which port is it listening on I want to see if I don't know which port OMI listens on typically runs on five nine eight six five nine eight five and twelve seventy so those are the common ports we'll try we'll scan those ports specifically And again, I'm kind of just using intuition as a part of the box name to deduce that that is the case. You would probably have had to run an nmap scan uh, to, to figure this out uh, otherwise. 5985-5986. Okay, we're going to scan those three ports. So it's it's similar to WinRM. It's essentially WinRM on Linux. It's essentially WinRM on Linux. And wouldn't you know it? Looky there. Again, this is mostly intuition based on the name of the box. Uh, oh my God was a very big vulnerability when it was released. Uh, I remembered it. And based on the name of the box, I was able to guess what the pivot uh, vector would be. However, uh, you could have uploaded a standalone. You could have waited for this scan to finish. Or you could uh, waited for a full end map scan to finish. Or you could have uploaded. Although I don't know if 5986 is scanned by default by end map. So it might have taken you a while to figure out which one was... Uh, uh, which, uh, which port was open. Um, so you probably would have wanted to upload the standalone and map binary. It would have gone faster than this. I had to look on Google for that port on Linux, but only return WinRM. Yeah, uh, essentially OMI is WinRM on Linux. It runs it for oh, for WinRM. It's 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 management. It's um it's something management instrumentation. Uh, open maybe open man. It's open management infrastructure framework. Uh, it's basically a uh, Linux administration in a uh, Microsoft Azure environment. So now we just need an oh my god POC. And 
oh my god is very very easy to exploit that was why it was so dangerous back in the day it's literally just a basically a xml you just send an xml document and boom code execution that's literally all it takes poc We've got a Python script here. See, it's it's all the Python script is doing is it's setting up this uh, this XML document. It's literally just an XML document. Windows basically communicates with everything via XML. Windows loves XML a lot. So I guess we'll just use this, huh? Let's just use this. I don't see a reason to not use this uh, implementation. Uh, git clone this uh, CD CVE okay Python 3 tech H okay it gives us a target IP and this is the power of proxy chains by the way because I can just if I want this to go through my socks proxy I can just do this just proceed it with proxy chains, CVE 2021. Uh, target IP is 172.17.0.1. Again, that's the IP address of the host through the proxy. Target port is 5986, I believe. Tax C is the command. We can just say ID. And looky there, chat. I am Groot. So now it's just as simple as... Again, this is a very straightforward exploit. Very, very straightforward. Um, uh, it's literally just an XML document. That's all it is. And you're just giving it a command. It's not really an exploit, except for you're bypassing the authentication. That's it. You're not doing a command injection or anything like that. Your OMI is supposed to execute commands remotely. It's like literally that's its idea. That that's the idea of it. The exploit comes in in that in that you don't you can bypass the need for authentication. That's the exploit. So we have our reverse shell here. We can listen on netcat tech nlvp. 8444 because we already have a port open on 8443 uh, I will need to change that and that and this needs to be changed to a 4 okay we execute uh, and I did not listen I did not put up a port or I did not listen it did not work. It's probably a... Uh, it might be wanting, wanting bin bash. Still not doing it. All right. Well. The easiest way is probably just to echo... Let's do base 64 encoding. Now let's just put this in double quotes and put the single quotes on the inside. Base 64. So we'll base 64 encode our shell here. Then we'll echo the base. Well, the command we'll execute will echo the base 64. Then we'll pipe it into base 64 dash D. Pipe that into bash. I'm going to explain what all this is doing afterwards. Don't worry. Connection refused. Oh, it's a good sign though.
There it goes. And there we are. I am Groot. All right. Yeah, I encoded a 443. My bad. All right. So what I did here is we're, we're running into a problem with bad characters, okay? We were... Uh, the It wasn't executing because we had bad... There were some bad characters involved, okay? Um, so instead, I base64 encoded the entire command. And the command that I actually sent it was the basic was echoing the base64 piping it into base64 d so it at, at execution time we are decoding it and then we're passing that command to bash does everybody understand that execution pipeline that's a common way to get past uh, bad character issues Thank you, that was fun. We're gonna do another box, by the way. We're not done yet. We're not done just yet. If you had, so any part of that box you still have questions on, chat. What part of that box do you guys still have questions on? Uh, where did I put the... Is it... Oh, it's over here. The pivoting just threw me off a bit. Yeah, sure. Uh, pivoting is always confusing to newbies, uh, but you frequently do have to pivot inside of a Docker container. Um, I did look for simple container escapes beforehand. Well done, L4Z Draco. Uh, you didn't even have to escalate inside of the... To be clear, you didn't even need to escalate inside of the container. You could have done that without getting root inside of the container. Could you quickly explain OMI again? Well, it's... Um, so it's a, it's typically present in Microsoft Azure environments, Turco. Um, uh, Microsoft Azure has to... Uh, you can set up Linux machines in Microsoft Azure. And Linux machines set up in Microsoft Azure will have OMI installed. That allows Azure to administrate that administer them remotely. It just it, it allows them to be remotely administered via the cloud. Um, that's just the default implementation of Linux on Microsoft Azure. Um, OMI is uh, uh, o OMI is designed to just run commands. It's like basically it executes commands remotely. It does a lot of things. Uh, it's very poorly documented, which is why the exploit wasn't found until last year. Um, but essentially. Uh, one of the things it does for remote management is execute commands. Uh, the exploit is in the fact that you don't need to properly authenticate to the service in order to execute code uh, for, through OMI. Um, and the, with the one of the reasons it's such a dangerous vulnerability uh, is because, first of all, a lot of Linux machines exposed over the internet. That's first of all. Second of all, um, uh, basically OMI always runs its root. So if you have a, if you're executing oh my god you are going to be root for sure. I did proving grounds today. This box is really cool inclusiveness. We're going to stick to try hack me today. Uh, I just don't want to start up proving grounds and switch my VPN and stuff. Um, if you have questions please do ask. I'm going to go ahead and uh, find a new try hack me box to do. We are going to do a uh, We're going to do an easy box this time, uh, both for time considerations and for considerations of... Uh... Time considerations and considerations of Newbie Tuesday. Okay. All right, here we are. So let's do difficulty easy. Challenges. Let's pick something that looks interesting. How about we just do Lee and you? Does this look good? 
We won't look at any of this stuff. Okay, we won't look at any of that. We just want to quick. We're gonna pop out a quick one. Okay, we're just gonna we're just gonna rub one out real quick. Okay, rub out a quick one, so to speak. Yeah, nice quickie. There you go. A nice quickie for Newbie Tuesday. Okay, Victor, Leanne, you. CD, Leanne, you. Emux new, Tech S, Leanne, you. Okay. The clock says it's 12.37 a.m. That's a good question. I don't know why it says that. I do not know why it says 12.37 a.m. It is not 12.37 here. Okay. So we're waiting for the box to show up. The spin up here. I'm, I might have it set on GMT. That might be GMT. That might be right. Do you have a preferred password spray tool for OWA? Um, Mail Sniper is good. Uh, I think Mail Sniper is the one that I've used in the past for OWA. Uh, I would look up Mail Sniper. You do need to... That is a PowerShell script, though. Uh, a good LC. Thank you for the follow. Creedmaster, I haven't heard of, but give it a shot. Ping 10102336. Okay. Nmap tech SC tech SV tech ON. Nmap 10102336. Okay. Get a nice Nmap scan in. Creedmaster is dope. I'm gonna have to try Creedmaster. I'll put, I'll even I'll even search for it. And I'll look it up later. Via Amazon AWS proxies. Nice. That's cool. I bought CRTP. I'm crazy to go on the material, but I'm almost finished with BTL L01. Oh, you should have a good time with CRTP, my dude. I haven't done CRTP, but I've heard good things. Okay. So we do see... We see port 21 FTP, uh, VSFTPD 3.0.2. We see OpenSSH. This is kind of an old version of OpenSSH. Uh, Apache HTTPD with no uh, version detection. Uh, we do have some RPC info on turn on port 111. We'll start on all a, on a full port scan. Okay, so let's go to port 80 really quickly. Take a look at this. Arrowverse. Yikes. Okay, so somebody's an Arrow fan. He traveled to China and Russia. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking DC Cinematic Universe cringe. Hi, everyone. I'm a huge fan of the Arrowverse. I built this VM concept based on the Arrow first season. You, you will find a few things similar here, and I posted this. Well, I hope I don't need to know it. Uh, would an older ERS version of SSH be a finding? Uh, not unless it was vulnerable to something. In this case, uh, we can see if it's vulnerable to something. It is kind of an older version. Uh, search exploit. Yeah, it's vulnerable to that username enumeration POC. That's very common. Uh, let's try the FTP version. You should be doing this search exploit stuff with all the software versions you see. It's a good thing to have in your workflow. Uh, no results there. Uh, let's try and connect to FTP. I believe uh, Nmap should have Hello, tested. Good morning, six eleven a.m. Good morning, Shira Good to see you. Ten ten twenty three thirty six.
we can try anonymous. I believe Nmap tries for anonymous login. Yeah. So we don't... We're going to need credentials for FTP. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to want to go buster. Let's go buster that... That's directory brute force that... Home... That, uh, root directory. Let's see if we get anything. Uh... View page source. Uh, pretty simple stuff here. It doesn't look like a CMS or anything like that. Where is the image being pulled from? I don't see a link to the image. I mean, it's here, lianyu.png. Let's go ahead and pull that down while we're looking. Oh, we do see a slash island directory. So you're gonna wanna use wget when you pull this down. Uh, and the reason is you don't wanna do this save image as because it's gonna remove the metadata. You wanna do wget, wget will preserve the metadata. Uh, we can do exif tool, uh, lianyu.png. Uh, we do see some like profile ID information in the metadata. That is interesting. Nothing that's terribly interesting here. We can try to go for a steg hide. Uh, oh, it's a PNG. So, yeah, that file format's not supported. Uh, island. Directory. Oh, no, don't talk. I wasn't expecting you at this moment. I will meet you there. You should find a way to lean you as we are planned. The code word is blank. Uh, it's view page source. The code word is vigilante. Okay, so a little CTF is the CTFE business here. Little CMS was in the exif tool output. Did I miss? Did I not observe? Where? I don't see it. I see references to Microsoft Corporation. CMM type. Profile CMM type. Oh, right there, little CMS, good call. Okay, yeah, I missed it. Nice. So, you should find a way to Lee and you as planned. The code word is vigilante. So, I'm assuming that there's some steganography. Again, the, the, this is a PNG though and not a JPEG. Can you do steganography in a, P oh God. I'm assuming you can do steganography in a PNG, and I just don't know. Uh, I guess steg hide just doesn't support it. Steg seek. So, steganography is a way of hiding data inside of an image. And normally, it's you don't ever see it in real life. It's just a CTF thing. It's a cute little CTF thing that we do. Um... Vigilante. Mm. 
Vigilante. Steg Seek. The NU.PNG. Wordless.text. <laughs> you can use Z Steg for PNG. PPT Tech Y install Z Steg. So we're just trying to get a steganography tool that works with PNG files. Uh, ZTag is a tool that can, uh, okay, gem install ZSTAG. It's a Ruby tool, looks like. We need one that works with uh, Ruby files. God damn it. Okay, Z stag. Uh, file name, I guess. Uh, the file name is Leanne Yu. So how do I feed it a password? It, uh, the passphrase. Vigilante is the passphrase. But how do I give ZSTAG a passphrase? Come on, dude. I just... It's a very CTF style thing. Like, the I, I, how do I feed this dumb shit a fucking passphrase? <sighs> yeah. Like, okay, so how do I give it a fast phrase? Like, can someone just tell me how I give it a passphrase? Yeah, we're getting all the data. It's all gibberish. It's all ridiculous gibberish. Okay, this is garbage then. Okay, all right, no, this is garbage. This is zero. At, this is this is garbage. Okay, up. Uh, Jesus fucking Christ! Like, I just want a way to fucking do PNGs with a passphrase. For fuck's sakes! This is not useful to me. I don't give a fuck. I guess we have not tried bin walk. I guess I could try that. This is normal. I think, isn't it? Like Zlib is just normal, right? Like it's not, yeah. Hunter must hunt. Code and go. Thanks for the five new cults initiates. Hate handles. Joka. Feel dead. Walkie. Walkies. Van Koy LD. Welcome to the All Has Red Team, my friends. Thanks for supporting the stream. Petra Damos. Thank you for the follow. Shiri Gartani. Thanks for the seven months. <laughs> Try Stego Toolkit and run it in. Run it in Docker. God, this is fucking annoying. It had to be a PNG and not a... Well, maybe I'm, uh... This is an easy room. I think you're overthinking this. I mean, it just... The only reason I'm so tunneled on steganography 
is uh, is it said steganography in the thing. And it says we need to go to Lian Yu. It said we need to go to Lian Yu, so... I mean, I guess we can brute force the island directory as well. I'm assuming there's got to be Stego at some point. We'll try brute forcing the island directory here, see if that gives us anything. There's a directory in there, 2100. Okay, well, there's more crap, apparently, that I... How Oliver Queen finds his way to Lian Yu. You can avail your ticket here, but how? Uh, it gives us a YouTube video. This has got to be a clue or something. It's not the Rick Roll one. I would recognize the Rick Roll one. I just want this ID. Uh, I'm assuming we have to watch this YouTube video for a clue. Video unavailable. Okay, yikes. All right, well, I hope that wasn't an important clue because you can avail your dot ticket here, but how? Is it dot ticket? Uh, Oliver... Queen dot ticket? No. Oh, I spelled it wrong. Oliver Queen ticket. Oliver underscore Queen ticket. I'm only guessing here. This is some CTF shit. I, I fucking still have an L there. God damn it. It says you can avail your dot ticket here. So if I just... Let's do to slash 2100. And let's do TACX ticket. Password dot ticket, file name. How Oliver Queen finds his way to Lian Yu. Again, I'm only guessing. Uh. Oliver Queen dot ticket? No. Is it green arrow dot ticket? Green arrow dot ticket. Ha! I'm, dude, I am fucking galaxy fucking brain, dude. Fucking gigantic fucking, I, I'm the, I'm that Wojak with, with his, with the guy's brain that he's, he's like sitting on a chair of his own brain. That's me right now, okay? Fucking, fucking gargantuan brain. This looks like base 64. Can't be right. This is a token to get into Queen's Gambit. Shit. Let's put this into Cyber Chef. And maybe it's not base 64? It can't be base 32. Let's just do magic. Let's see if magic gets it for once. Bake.
hit the page source. Did I not look at the page source? No, nope, it's just a text file. View page source. It's just a text file. Okay, got a bunch of garbage, bunch of garbage. Bunch of garbage, bunch of garbage, bunch of garbage. I don't know, ma magic doesn't seem to be working for me. Let's try encryption and coding. I mean, it's too short to be encrypted. Well, I guess it could be encrypted. Maybe it's ROT 13. No. ROT 47? No. Uh, well, we're not going to try any encryption until I wear, wear out all of my guesses for... X. Uh, it can't be base 32. It's There's lowercase characters. Uh, base 58. That looks good. Dude, again, galaxy fucking brain, my dude. Holy fucking shit, dude. I'm on fucking... I am on fire right now. I'm out of control. How do you handle this? So that's a password of some kind. Um... FTP. Let's try the FTP server again. 10.10. Uh, .10. What is the... 2336. What? Come on. What's going on here? Oh, it found it anyways. Believe it or not, GoBuster found it. Oh, okay. There we go. Um, well, the hood looks like a... It said this was passage onto Queen's Gambit. Ship. Is ship... Was, was it... Is it ship? No. Uh, Vigilante? Okay, okay. Okay, we're in. Okay, now we have some... Okay, passage on to Queen's Gambit. Now it makes sense. Okay. Get, leave me alone dot png dude imagine watching green arrow and not just seeing shittier batman why would you want to watch shittier batman i even watched the first season of of green arrow and i'm like my opinion on this character is unchanged <laughs> just batman but shittier All right, let's take a look at these images. See, now here's... Maybe this is where the the Stego comes in. We're going to want to exif tool them. All right, so that's the image we've already seen. Loading leave me alone PNG failed, so it's probably not a PNG then. Uh, we have a ship, that's good, and uh, we have um, a character. I'm assuming from this show. Okay. Uh, so let's see what is leave me alone PNG then. It's just data. We'll run bin walk on that. Uh, it's literally just data, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like it's just garbage. Or it's something. Maybe it's encrypted. 
could be encrypted. Yeah, we do have we do have a JPEG. Stag hide extract AA.jpg. Uh, no, let's try the hood. Wrong magic bites? Is it? Uh, uh XXD? Uh, we're gonna wanna pipe that into less. So is it just... It just wants me to change the... It just wants me to change the, uh, yeah, we could do strings. Uh, we can try strings for sure. Grep, uh, let's do it in the less. So people are saying that I should just change the header. Is that what people are saying? To match PNG magic bytes? PNG magic bytes. Let me just see what the magic bytes are. File signatures. So this is how Linux identifies uh, file types. It's the It checks the first several bytes of the file. Um, and different files will have different signatures at the beginning. So it looks like these are supposed to be the magic bytes. Do we have a hex editor on here? Do I have a good hex editor? Hex edit will do. Okay. Hex edit. Leave me alone.png. And here we are. So let's go ahead and change these bytes. And see if that fixes it. This is like, this is some serious CTF stuff. You, you shouldn't have to do this on OSCP or in your assessments at all. Eight, nine, five, zero, four, E, four, seven, zero, D, zero, A, 1A, 0A. Okay. How do I exit? How do I exit out of hex edit? <sighs> Control X? Uh, yes. Okay, good. Let's see if it opens now. Oh, it does open now. Good call, chat. I would not have guessed that. Good call. All of that to get the password of... Password. Oh, 
Okay. <laughs> Fucking Christ. Um, okay, stag hide. Wow. All right, unzip. I'm guessing it's going to be encrypted, right? Nope, nope, it's not. This is your visa to land on Lian Yu just for fun. Having spent years on the island, Oliver learned how to be resourceful and set booby traps all over the island. Yes, I know. Shitty Batman. Yeah. In the event... He learned karate uh, in a survival situation on an island, okay? Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. I switched the camera! I switched the camera! Pheasants, wild pigs, and wolves. Okay, great. I don't care. All right, uh... Meta human. Um. Okay, I'm assuming this is SSH credentials somehow. Is it just Oliver? SSH Oliver. SSH Oliver at 10 10 2336. That did not work. Uh, do we need to get a username from the other file, I wonder? It was a, sh it was a tough time for shitty Batman. <laughs> it was. It was a tough time for shitty Batman. Um, does anybody know the name of this character? Oh, we could try Vigilante again. Does anybody know the name of the character, just in case this doesn't work? Vigilante. Slade Wilson. Uh, I guess we could try that. What the fuck kind of a name is Slade? Okay, well, whoever said Slade, good work. Oh, it's Deathstroke. Okay. Okay, well, he's even... Shitty Batman is even taking Batman's villains away. It's not even his good villains. It's like his... Deathstroke is like D-list. Okay, we're finally... We finally have a shell. Hackerman. I'm in. All right, Privesk time. Sudo Tac L. I believe in you, Sudo Tac L. Fucking easy, dude. Fucking easy, bro. We can go to GTFO bins. PK exec's whole thing is executing code as root, so I, I can't imagine this will be a problem. PK exec. Yeah, I can just sudo PK exec bin sh. Who am I? We are root. Well done, fellas. Let's enter all these things. What's the web directory island? What the fuck? Oh, 2100. Was it 21? Yeah. File name you found was green arrow.ticket. FTP password was the hood. File name with the SSH password, uh, aa.jpg. Uh, what was it? The SSH password was, it was aa.jpg, wasn't it? Oh, Shado. Cat root.txt. We're just getting the flags. Okay, fuck off D list, Batman. Jesus Christ. Yeah, Deathstroke's only a villain for Oliver Queen because he gets his shit kicked because he's he can't he can't crack into that C list of uh, Batman villains. 
So he's like, I could be an A-list villain with shitty Batman. The competition for shitty A-list on shitty Batman is not is uh is is uh not significant. There we go. All right, any questions on that little crazy box? Little bonus box at the end there just for funsies. Any questions, comments, threats, bi bribes chat before we pass you guys off? I Pombix, thanks for the follow. Who's streaming? Taggart is streaming. We'll go ahead and raid Taggart. All right, guys. Thanks so much for being here for this Newbie Tuesday. We'll be back on Thursday for some some uh, tougher challenges with Cthulhu Thursday. Um, bring Taggart grand tidings of Dread Cthulhu. Uh, Gar, thank you so much for those... Five new cult initiates. Magic, Metodija, Shonen, Cyber Gumier, Professor Dragmire, and Woken, Woken Phoenix. Woke, Wookeen Phoenix. I love that. Joaquin Phoenix uh, stylized. Uh, thank you guys so much for being here. Um, go to bed tonight knowing a little bit more than you did yesterday. I hope you learned more about Docker. Experiment with Docker in your own time. Learn Docker. Practice with it. It, it can really help your workflow, I promise you. Um, I'll see you guys again when the stars are right. Have a good night, day, or whatever time it is, wherever you are. Stay safe and get vaccinated. Love you all.